focus on two verses. The first verse in Matthew says, When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And the last verse said, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. Now in those two passages, we have two groups of men who received the news of the birth of Jesus. One group, when they received the news, the Bible said they were troubled. They were miserable. The other group, when they received the news of the birth of Jesus, they were glorifying God. They were merry. And so one group was miserable at the news of Jesus' birth. The other group was merry at the news of Jesus' birth. And so the message is in the form of a question. And the question is, are you going to have a miserable Christmas or a Merry Christmas? It's a question. Are you going to have a miserable Christmas or are you going to have a Merry Christmas? You see, in 10 days, we're going to be celebrating Christmas, the birth of our Lord and Savior. And everywhere we go, we see signs in the mall saying, Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. And people who don't normally speak at other times of the year will even nod and say, Merry Christmas. But not everybody is going to have a Merry Christmas. The insurance industry says there are more suicides at this time of the year than at any other time. The social workers tell us that more people are depressed during the Christmas season than any other time of the year. For many, Christmas is a lonely time because it's a reminder of that loved one who's not there anymore. The alcohol industry are projecting sales of $60 million during the Christmas season. People are going to be drinking, either trying to have a Merry Christmas or trying to avoid a miserable Christmas. And there are some people who are going to be miserable not only for Christmas, but throughout the whole rest of the year for next year. Because they're going to be trying to pay off the high credit card debt they built up this year trying to buy a Merry Christmas. And so the question is to you, you need to answer the question now. It's up to you. Are you going to have a miserable Christmas? Or are you going to have a Merry Christmas? You see, if your Christmas joy is wrapped up in the number of presents that you're going to receive, then you're headed for a miserable Christmas. Because it's not the presents. It's not the days out of school. It's not the parties that are going to help you to have a Merry Christmas. Christmas. You see, at my house, I got lights all across the front of the house, all over the hedges. We spent two days decorating what I think is the prettiest tree in the city. <laughs> and there's nothing under the tree. And there probably won't be anything under the tree. But every night, I plug it in. Because I enjoy just looking at my tree. Because the tree is a reminder of what's going on this season. 
Is that Stephen Wonder wrote a song that had a line in it that said, even though we sometimes did not get a thing. What's the rest of that song line said? We were happy with the joy the day would bring. It's the day. You may not get anything but the day. And so you need to make a decision right now. Are you going to have a miserable Christmas? Or are you going to have a merry Christmas? And if anybody should have had a merry Christmas, it should have been the Jews. For 800 years, they had waited for a promised Messiah. That promise had been renewed by the judges. That promise had been decreed by the kings. That promise had been proclaimed by the prophets. That promise had been repeated by the priest. And that promise was passed on from generation to generation. And then for 400 years, from Malachi to Matthew, there was no word from heaven. But then in the fullness of time, God fulfilled his perfect promise and sent his son down through 42 generations, born in Bethlehem of Judea. And the Jews should have been having a Merry Christmas. But the Bible said that when Herod heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Jesus had just been born. He hadn't even spoken a word. He hadn't taken his first step. He hadn't even worked a miracle. He had not preached his first sermon, but just the news of his birth. Caused Herod and Jerusalem to be troubled. See, a lot of folk are troubled when they hear about Jesus. Because again, they start thinking about the habits they got to break. They start thinking about the lifestyle they got to change. They start thinking about the things they got to give up. You see, the news of Jesus coming will make you miserable if you're not ready. For his coming. And so are you going to have a miserable Christmas? Or are you going to have a merry Christmas? You see, the Jews should have had a merry Christmas. If anybody should have had a merry Christmas, after waiting 800 years, and a Messiah comes, and instead of being married, they had a miserable Christmas. And Luke says, in that same country, there were some shepherds. And shepherds were considered outcast. Shepherds were considered unclean. Shepherds were not allowed to enter the temple. A shepherd was considered untrustworthy. A shepherd couldn't even testify in a court of law. And Luke said there were some shepherds who had their abiding in the fields. In other words, the shepherds were outside. They were outside the interaction of the Jewish community. They were outside of the relationship with their family. They had their body outside. You know, in every family, they got some folk who have their body outside. They might be living in the same house, but they are outside the relationship with the rest of the family. Sometimes we call them the black sheep of the family. They're outside of interaction with the family. Every day we pass by folk who have their abiding outside. We call them homeless people. And folk that pass right on by don't want to be bothered with them. 
But even in the midst of a crowded city, they have their abiding outside. And even in the church, there are some folk who abide outside. Yes, they attend service on Sunday, but they're outside of the relationship of the body. They don't take time to fellowship with the rest of the body. As soon as the benediction is said, they hurry on out the door, never stopping the fellowship. I tell you, they're outside of the body. And so while these shepherds were outside, the Bible says an angel of the Lord appeared unto the shepherds. And the shepherds were so afraid. In other words, they were greatly afraid. They were shaking in their boots. They were miserable. Fear will make you miserable. Fear will cause you to lose sleep. Fear will cause you to have ulcers. Fear will make you do things that you know you ought not to do. Fear will make you deny Jesus. But the angel said unto the shepherds, fear not. And then he gave them three reasons why they ought not to fear. The first reason he said fear not is because he said unto you. Not to the priest in the temple. Not to the king in the castle. Not to those who enjoy the comfort of the inn, but to you. To you who are mistreated. To you who are downtrodden. To you who are struggling to make ends meet. To you who are grieving because you lost a loved one. To you who received a bad report from the doctor. Unto you who don't know how you're going to make ends meet. He said unto you. See you've got to know that Jesus came for you. It's a personal thing. 